right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation was even going on during the break and it's very heated, but we'll try and squeeze in a few more views really quick. And we'd also like to hear from you too to forward about Tutu's SMS line at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya at Waiga Mwaura, hashtag Daybreak. Let us know what you think, whether language is that important. Okay. In this time of modernization. And we have a new generation, yes? That's so right. People with, without the Wahiga, Moura, the Obija Obijas, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, can you imagine you meet a kid, you ask them, what's your name? And they tell you, I am blessed. And you're like, no, you're I like, meant uh, what's no, your name. what is your name? Yeah, you know what I, mean? I know you're blessed, but what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> so we have two young uh, fellows here. Let them introduce themselves and tell us this. What do people tell you when you tell them your name? What sort of reaction do you normally get? We start with one of them. Ukiambi watu jinako, wanakuambia nini? What do they tell you? Wanakuambia nini? Wanasema hiyo jina ni sawa ama sio sawa? Kwanza tuanze na jina yako. Unaitwa nani? I'm blessed. Hiyo ndio jina yako. Hiyo ni jina yako. I am blessed. Ukiambia marafiki zako unaitwa I am blessed wanakuambia nani? Wananiambia jina ni iko sawa. Iko sawa. Jina iko sawa. Hakuna mtu ashakuuliza kwa nini hauna jina nyingine kama Kamau ama jina nyingine? No. Okay. That's interesting. Nandibu. It's a new generation. Yes. Yeah, so, so they're they, not concerned about. They don't about care about it. Yeah. All right. Now one eight or nine. Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> Marafiki zako wana kuambia jo kwa mbia jina yako ni keep it real. How say maje? Some others say it's hard, so I say so I say you can just call me keep it. Then they say okay. You call it keep it. Keep. Uh, keep. Yes. So when you know that I can't. You speak your mother tongue. Unonge lugha nyumbani. Although nyumbani tu miambo mononge kiswahili. Unonge anga lugha gani nyumbani tu anziabo. Okay. Unongega lugha gani nyumbani na kina mama na kina which, which, which language? Yes, they which language? Speak in English. Okay. Which you're being asked, Trevor, which language? Which language? Those yes. Which language when, do you speak at home? I used those days when I used to speak English. English we used to speak in the house Kiswahili so that I can learn. Now when I go out and speak Kiswahili they say, "Oh yeah. Yes." Yes, so, so you only speak English when daddy is watching this. you, like you know, out there you're speaking Kiswahili. <laughs> no, sometimes it's not around. You okay. see, right. language, people learn it when they just talk. Mm -hmm. When they just talk. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right, so there are people whose voices we haven't heard on this discussion. Yeah. Um, Shiko, uh, we haven't heard your voice on this. Uh, just jump in and then also um, uh, Elizabeth as well. So can I keep it from, uh, like keep it real. as short as well? Yeah, keep, keep it, it real. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's simple. Language, you learn it when we speak, you know. Mm. And we are a country of 43 tribes right now. And I even 44. Think we are 44. Mm. With, you with know? the Asian community exactly. coming in as well. So we want all of us, it's okay to learn tribes. This is where our diversity comes in. But then let's not lie ourselves. If we cannot learn of the simple values we have in our constitution, mm -hmm. that our tribes will teach us values. <laughs> We know the people who are supposed to teach us values right now are the people stealing from us, are the people messing this country up. So we cannot lie to ourselves. And that's why I was shocked when Trevor said we cannot put this in political manner because I look at this, right now we're already being mobilized politically. We're not using Swahili or English. We're using our Vanacular. tribes, you know. <laughs> and as I grew up, I, I, I grew up in a society where a tribe is negative ethnicity. You know, where it's all stereotyped. Oh, you're Kikuyu, man, you're a thief. You're Luya, oh, you love food, you know. <laughs> so it's, we cannot lie to ourselves if we put this in school and have, we already cannot even, put, like, transport books in school. We cannot even get our people to eat because we, we don't even have mechanism to transport food. Do you speak your mother tongue? Yes, I do, but I don't do it everywhere, and it's rare. Exactly. You know, because yeah. I learned it, because I was raised in Kiambu, Hapa Central, but then I moved to Nakuru, where we have all tribes there. And then I learned one thing, that I have friends I don't even know their second names. Because even today, our today generation, if I stand and say my name is Wanjiko Kehika, everybody goes like, your tribe betrays you. <laughs> <laughs> your name betrays you. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how do you even put out that, now let me start teaching these kids. We have Sheng right now. So do we also include it as a tribe? Because there are kids out here who cannot even say I'm Kikuyu or Luya. Okay. I know Sheng is what I speak. Elizabeth, and Sheng is better because it has all of it. It has all of it. <laughs> it has all of it. Um, 
I, I think you there is the negative as, uh, aspect yeah. of uh, tribalism or yeah. of rather languages and all that. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean we should completely erase it. As he said, it is learned through speaking, mm -hmm. which means if I'd have grown up, say, in, uh, I don't know, Kiambu, maybe I would be speaking Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. And there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. The point is we need to keep language going because if say you don't teach your child um kikuyu and then and say the person you're married to in that way it, uh, 10 generations from now we will have completely no languages do you think then that means that we will not have the problems we're having maybe right we'll now maybe we'll be able to think and elect people properly but i don't think wow. necessarily yeah. Yeah. you see the thing is we still come from where we come we from think. so the fact that i do not speak that language does not mean that if you're campaigning and you're trying to get my vote, say if 10 generations from now, we will still be coming from like say Nyanza and Western and where not. Mm -hmm. So if you want to still appeal to me and say you're my person, even if we don't speak the language, you will still be able to do it. And that's the thing. You will tell me in English, in Kiswahili, in whatever language I understand and tell me uh, do this and do this and I will understand it. So even though language has been used as a way to uh, get people to like Mobilize during the post-election violence and mm -hmm. all that, it does not mean that it should be erased because regardless of whether I know my language or not, mm -hmm. if, even if I don't understand it, you can still appeal to me and I will still do it. Just be, by you saying we are from the same whatever. Unfortunately, it's not what it's like in the real life. And we have a cocktail already. Sheng. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eko. Let's get Eko quick. Eko is quick. pushing for Sheng. Yeah, let's have another quick view. views yeah. from Eric. everyone. <laughs> Eric, very briefly. Uh, well, uh, I would say that culture is a very important element of any nation. Mm. To some extent, uh, culture defines uh, the pace of development and even the direction uh, that such development process takes. Mm. And so my, 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 my plea is that we let us embrace our culture, but let us also think of those what we call retrogressive cultures yeah. that mm -hmm. take us back. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is good, keep it. What is bad, throw, throw, throw it out. Throw it out, okay. okay. Think, that, that language is not bad, that's the thing. That's what he's, he's not <laughs> saying that language is bad, so we should cut it. And I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. I'm saying... It feels we've, like you're saying so we far, should so far, we've not languages. been able to... Right. So we should only say... All right, so let's get another mute from the Elkana back there. Order members. Order members, let's pass the microphone to Elkana back there, yeah. Very briefly. In my case, uh, I, I, I think there are a lot of people who, who, if they were to be deported because of language, I think a could be deported to where? To Islam. Where they, where, not Islam. <laughs> I guess he actually is bringing in the culture of uh, uh, the United States of America to here. Because if we decide today that we want to speak in, in Islam, in Sheng, Yaman, how many people will understand? <laughs> Me, Everyone. for example, for Whoa. instance, I was born in deep culture whereby I learned about the norms and the morality in the society. Mm. And right now, I can speak fluently in my mother tongue and even in Kiswahili and the other language. There is a saying in Kiswahili that says, Mwachamila ni mtumwa. So, how many watumwas do you have in Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> That's what no one has. In this case, I don't believe there's a in Kenya. The only Kiswahili that exists in Kenya is the very one that is being spoken yeah. by these anchors. Okay. Yes. But the rest of us, we do mix up. That's okay. why we have only. Let's hear what Ram has to say as we yes. final remarks here. Yeah. So about Sheng, inevitably such things will happen. We don't have to push for we don't have to push for Sheng to yeah, be a language. Happens. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. Cultures fuse, languages fuse, and all of a sudden you formed a Cocktail. whole different language. Yeah. So when it comes to um, we stand a risk of all of us being the same if we lose our, our languages. If we all spoke English, what's the difference? Like there's so much beauty in difference. There's so much beauty with me saying, I'm, I'm Luo, I, I speak like this, this is how Luo sounds. There's so much beauty with someone saying, I'm Kikuyu, I speak like this, and this is how Kikuyu sounds. If we say that we erase languages, then we all speak English, and then what? You know, we've we've lost we've lost a, a whole entire tribe I get culture. What we are saying. And then there are some, there are some also there's there's some knowledge that we lose because there are certain things that are not recorded down in books that you can learn in your language in your in your tribe. You know, so we tend to lose those things as well. There are some lessons that my mom can only teach me in 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 her mother tongue. 
that she can't even translate it into English. Yeah. But it's such a crucial lesson that I will need it in my life and for me to pass it down to my children. So what happens if my mother doesn't teach me my, uh, our mother tongue? All we right. tend to lose all that. As an uh, some variables are challenging us not to learn our indigenous languages. Intermarriage, for example, mm -hmm. that one comes from Meru, mm -hmm. marries a Luo. So the kids are supposed to speak what? Mm -hmm. So as parents, we have to be intentional to teach our children our languages, our indigenous languages. But it should not be mandatory. Also, as young people, just because we have been socialized to believe that uh, out of a language comes in ethnicity, negative, tribal ethnicity, does not mean we should allow it. It should be up to us to be intentional, to teach our young children that there is beauty in the languages that we speak. It does not mean I see a kikuyu and I see money. It does not mean I see a luya and I see food. It is how we take initiatives as young people and instill positive values of where we come from. I'm a very proud Miru and I will tell you the positives of being where I come from. And the negative, what I do, do not What do people see when they, see, when they hear where you're from? <laughs> they, they, they are shocked, yeah. actually. Well, they see a sira, you know. A sira. A panga, yeah. a takata mtu. Oh but th that's not what I'm about. I'm actually a very soft-spoken <laughs> person, you see. So for and me... the comedians, the comedy about <laughs> the tribe itself, yani. So yes. it, it is up to us as young people to change the narrative. Okay. Okay. And also, Brand Kenya, you have a lot of work to do. Yeah. That I if agree. us young people here have dissenting views eh what about the people out there uh -huh. so just because we have been socialized to think uh, ethnicity is bad language is bad we should not be okay with it uh -huh. because we are losing our whole generation and now these children may not know some of the things that i know yeah. so if i try to give them even a proverb they'll be like hey, say what you yeah. Know? say what yeah like so say, run down let me again be intentional echo. about it one, right. li one line echo one line. <laughs> yes, one line. What's your closing remarks. statement? My yes. closing statement is, if we can't use something let's positively, throw it let's down. turn it down. Turn it down, yeah, not throw it away. Down. Not throw it away. It's important, but turn it down. Let's look at the others that we have that are amazing okay. and work with that. We have tribe all generation, language is really, wh where did language come from? Yeah. It was from division. God used it to divide. That's where its its origin is in the Bible. Oh, so this is biblical at the end of the day. And God knows the beauty of language. He knows it, okay. and he knows it more than us. And yet mm -hmm. he still used it to divide. So let's use languages that are uniting us more. Okay. That's what I advocate for, and turn the others down. All right. Flo is final word. Uh, for me, what I would say is that there's a reason why uh, the UN uh, Council on uh, Environment and Culture spends a lot of time and money to preserve some languages. We don't want to reach at that stage where we are looking for people to help pres preserve the languages that are about to be extinct. They are, we are now at a position where we can save some languages. It is good to learn them. Okay. Having said that, we still have to look at ourselves from an, as a nation perspective and you, a unity factor. And the unity factor, one of which, which should be language, and we follow through with what our constitution says, our official languages are Swahili so and, and English. And English. All right. But we encourage the use of indigenous. Vernacular. Yes. All right. And let's see what you're saying online before we That's wrap this right. up. There's a lot of feedback coming through on our studios. Let's bring them up. And this and is probably a discussion we we'll have to meet. resurrect again because I know our guys are not satisfied yet with, with the depth of conversation. Michael or, or Mike or Michael, the move to start teaching mother tongue in schools is quite absurd. We have 42 tribes in Kenya. Which of these will be taught in schools? Because these days, schools carry people from all tribes. See Okama and Zizakina Babazetu, where they had village schools. <laughs> all right, let's bring up another one. See what you're saying, Olo says languages is appreciated all over the world. The only problem we have as Kenyans, we never appreciate and are proud of our tribe and languages. Look at how president is proud of the Kikuyu language. Okay. All right. Benjamin Odili, language and cultures are very important in our everyday life. Language is never our problem. But greedy and selfishness, we are not our brother's keepers. If you forget your language, you will succeed in life, but hard, but hard as it has impact on your life. All right, let's see another one here. David Bett says, knowing your mother tongue doesn't mean you speak it everywhere. Know it for the sake of your root identity. And this is, this is uh, <laughs> uh, you know, people who just meet you and they immediately address yeah. you in a language. <laughs> De, De Gerege, David, please know that English is also a mother tongue. 
only that it's not Kenyan. Native language can still be used to teach nationality. All right, let's take a look at the SMSs. The line is 224222. We'll try and squeeze in as many of them as possible. There are quite a number. You don't leave a name, but you say going forward as a nation, I don't think promoting mother tongue is a tool to unite us. That is why we have this mentality. It is our turn to eat in office. We need to be one. Okay, you don't give us your name as well, but you say teaching mother tongue is highly retrogressive. Do you remember the Tower of Babel? And I think I could alluded to this. When God introduced tribes, the builders could not understand each other and the project failed. We also have intermarriages. Which language will they learn? All right, good question there. Let's see another one. Ruto from Caricho says, do anything to eradicate tribalism, but for heaven's sake, do not eradicate my God-given mother tongue. Wow, heaven's sake. Heaven's sake. Yeah, you see the pun there. <laughs> Letepa, I am fluent in Kalenjin with a Samburu name. Wow. All right. Violet from Kawasukari says, Knowing a language is power, a mother tongue gives us identity, meaning culture, a genealogy, it is C. Wow. All right. Let's not embrace English at the expense of language one. Mm. We need to decolonize our mind. In your colony, Mamboleo. All right. It's just written there, hashtag Wakanda. Grace yeah. Jeru, if we lose our mother tongue, we lose important aspects of our culture. It's unfortunate that Kenyans are proud to adopt foreign languages while looking down upon our languages and values. Let us not wonder why there's a lot of moral decay in our society today. Finally, it is erroneous to blame tribalism on mother tongue. All Grace right, let's Jeru see if there. we can squeeze in one more here. Steve from Eldred says, culture must be extended to schools, mother tongue should be taught in school, and government must take charge. Okay, right. by a show of hands as we finish, how many speak their mother tongue fluently? Show, okay. You all don't. <laughs> My fluently. <laughs> how many half speak their mother tongue? Like yeah. you can you can get along? Mm. <laughs> I, should, I should probably... <laughs> How many have no idea? Uh, Completely, echo. like echo. zero. Keep it real and I'm blessed. Raise can your I hands, speak? guys. Do you know, can you speak mother tongue? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. But their mother tongue is what their dad speaks. It's what their dad speaks? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. I see. No. That's a whole new idea. Their mother tongue is what their dad speaks. Your mother, mother tongue is yeah. what your mother yeah, speaks. That's okay. okay. That's, that's a whole new Web wars. Now. They, this is not web wars because web wars is happening. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like it. It sounded like it. Uh, but that was just random sampling and just to see who speaks, how fluent they speak their mother tongue. And uh, we, again, keep this conversation going online. You know the you know what to do, 2242, yeah. and the hashtag is Daybreak. All right, thank you so much, guys, for making time this morning. I'm sure we'll have this conversation again next time. That's right. Imani Bugwa is up next with the Web Wars. Does he speak his mother tongue? Yeah, we'll ask him. We that should was, actually. That's his, so. That should be his opening statement. Kimani, when you walk in, tell your viewers whether you speak your mother tongue. Yeah. He says he accepts the challenge. Accept, He's nodding challenge his head just behind the camera. <laughs> right. Kimani Bogo up next.